Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The governor of Texas blasts the National Football League for demanding co-ed bathrooms. Congress may let states defund Planned Parenthood in their states. And another former Navy chaplain takes a stand for religious freedom. Former Navy chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The governor of the great state of Texas, Greg Abbott, is now blasting the National Football League, who put out a statement demanding co-ed bathrooms, demanding that Texas open up women's bathrooms to cross-dressing men. Why would the NFL do that? Well, now the governor of Texas is fighting back. The Texas Tribune reports that Governor Greg Abbott blasted the NFL for raising the prospect that Texas's so-called bathroom bill legislation, in other words, to prevent men from going into the women's bathroom, could impact future events in the state. In fact, the NFL is disguising their threat to never host a Super Bowl in Texas Stadium, for example. They waded into a debate that has been, so far, mostly steered clear of, but Governor Abbott went on national conservative radio with host Glenn Beck, and he said, quote, the NFL is walking on thin ice right here. The NFL needs to concentrate on playing football and get the heck out of politics, end quote. Almost a week after Houston did host Super Bowl 51, there was a statement by the National Football League spokesman, Brian McCarthy, who said, quote, proposals that are discriminatory or inconsistent with our homosexual values would certainly be a factor for considering future events in Texas, end quote. Why does the National Football League have homosexual values? That's what I wanna know. Senate Bill 6, which is a priority of Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, would require so-called transgender people to use bathrooms in public schools, government buildings, and public universities based on their actual biological sex rather than their, rather than their imaginary pretend sex. And it would preempt men from using women's bathrooms. It would also preempt local non-discrimination ordinances, like the one that Houston tried to pass last year, that allow men to use women's bathrooms in the city of Houston, for example. Or if they say that it corresponds with how they feel that day, then a man can become a woman and violate other women's privacy. Governor Abbott told Glenn Beck, quote, for some low level NFL advisor to come out and say that they're going to micromanage and try to dictate to the state of Texas what types of policies and laws we're gonna pass in our state, that's unacceptable. We don't care what the NFL thinks and certainly what their political policies are because they are not a political arm of the state of Texas or the United States of America. The NFL needs to learn their place in the United States, which is to govern football, not politics, end quote. Amen to Governor Abbott, thank God. Well, he first hinted over the weekend that he was not pleased with the NFL getting involved in uh, debates about cross-dressing in co-ed bathrooms. Abbott said earlier in a tweet linking the story to the NFL statement, quote, NFL decision makers also benched Tom Brady last season. Well, that was a mistake. It ended up with the NFL handing the Super Bowl trophy to that same Tom Brady, end quote. 
Governor Abbott also railed against NFL players who protested racial opposition or oppression last year by sitting down or kneeling during the national anthem, which insulted the American flag. And those protests began with San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick. Governor Abbott said, quote, I cannot name or even count the number of Texans who told me that they were offended and not watching the NFL. They are protesting the NFL this year because of the gross political statement allowed to be made by the NFL by allowing these players who are not oppressed, who now are almost like snowflake little politicians, uh, unable to take the US national anthem being played, end quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to Glenn Beck and The Blaze and Governor Abbott for providing those quotes. You know, uh, let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Here in this story, we have a governor, Greg Abbott, God bless him. And we have the National Football League spokesman, uh, I forget the guy's name here, Brian McCarthy, right? And those are human actors, great. But where are the spirits in this story? Well, you can tell by the but looking at these people through the lens of human morality, what spirits they're being influenced by. And when you see, for example, women's privacy being violated by confused men who want to go in and invade the women's bathroom in Texas, and you see lawmakers trying to stop that, trying to legislate sanity and protect little girls from having their safety and security violated by adult men, in public schools, no less. When you see the voice of God influencing, for example, Governor Greg Abbott to stand up for safety, to stand up, and he has great courage to do this. Or when you see this evil and immoral suggestion being put out there by Brian McCarthy, the spokesman for the NFL, you can tell that he's being influenced by a demonic spirit for two reasons. Number one, it's immoral for men to pretend that they're women and violate the, women in, uh, the safety of women and little girls. But number two, you can see that Brian McCarthy is speaking out of school. He does not even have the authority, we think, to speak on behalf of the commissioner of the NFL, Brian Goodell or whatever his name is. Uh, when they say, we want as the NFL, let's say he is speaking for, speaking for the commissioner. We as the NFL are going to tell Texas how to pass their legislation. They have overstepped their bounds. And that is a spirit of arrogance, not just sexual immorality. And thank God they've been put back in their place. Let's pray about this. You know, the Bible says this in, what is the scripture we have here? Deuteronomy chapter 22. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray against this demonic spirit of abomination that would cause confusion between the sexes, and not just about clothing, this is not about clothing, but this is about propriety and violating the safety and privacy of vulnerable women and girls. Father, we stand up as a society against the demonic influence that is inside of confused men. And Father, we pray even against the political influence and the arrogance that the National Football League is trying to impose upon sane and Christian thinking people of the state of Texas. God, give liberty in the state of Texas so we can be free from this oppression. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Congress may let the states defund Planned Parenthood. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court-martial 
And finally, Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I want to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God. But we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe vs. Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back and God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. The United States Congress may now begin to let states defund Planned Parenthood instead of threatening to withhold their Medicaid dollars as the Obama administration had done. Now Republicans are in charge on Capitol Hill and Liberty Council reports that in a victory for the sanctity of human life, would end some taxpayer funding for abortions, the United States House of Representatives voted overwhelmingly 230 to 188 to overturn a administrative rule that former President Obama had established preventing states from defunding Planned Parenthood. HJ resolution, House Joint Resolution 43 if passed by the US Senate and signed by President Trump eventually, would mean that states can now choose to redirect Title X funds away from the largest abortion provider in the United States. Under President Obama, the states could not defund Planned Parenthood, had to pass along those Title X funds to provide abortions. Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion facilitator, performed reportedly, according to their own statistics, 323,999 abortion procedures, which by the way, were subsidized by the taxpayers during 2014 and 2015 alone. But in recent years, several states who were receiving Title X family planning grants had opted to direct those funds to local county health departments instead of Planned Parenthood and community health centers centers that actually care for women and other types of providers instead of to organizations like Planned Parenthood that specialize in abortions and not really very much in women's health. Here's a statement from Matt Staver, our friend who is founder and chairman of Liberty Council. He said, quote, Today's decision by the House of Representatives toward defunding Planned Parenthood is another significant step in the battle to make the womb a safe place again for little children. Taxpayers should not be forced to fund human genocide and foot the bill for an organization like Planned Parenthood that profits from the sale of aborted baby body parts. We have to diligently work to reverse the horrific damage from the Obama administration that has already ended so many innocent children's lives. I encourage the US Senate to pass House Joint Resolution 43 quickly so that President Trump can put his signature on it." End quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to Liberty Council for that report and also Matt Staver for giving us the legal analysis and keeping us informed. You know, let's take a moment and discern the spirits. 
In this story, we have human actors, we have congressmen, we have Title X funding that's going to the states, we have state administrators, and we have Planned Parenthood who is receiving this money and their, their administrators. And then we have the innocent children that are being exterminated in the womb. Those are just the human actors in this story. Well, where are the non-human spirits? Where is the spirit of God and where is the spirit of the devil in this story? We can discern that through the lens of human morality. When we look at the moral choices being made by the human actors in this story, we can tell what spirits they're listening to when they're about to choose A or B. So for example, there's the Planned Parenthood administrator who not only demands, or as the Obama administration demands that they receive taxpayer funding, but then they use that money to kill innocent children and they're making a moral choice. So are they listening to the spirit of God when they demand taxpayer funding to kill innocent children? When they take the aborted baby parts, whether it's a liver or a kidney from that innocent child that they just murdered and they sell it for profit as, as their own administrators admitted on videos this past couple of years, are they listening to the spirit of God when they kill those innocent children? No, they're listening to a demonic spirit of murder and there is blood on their hands. Now, on the other hand, in the US Congress, when Republican legislators who happen to be pro-life pass legislation to allow states to stop sending taxpayer dollars to that, are these legislators listening to the spirit of God? Yes, I think they would listen to a God of the, the God of the Bible who loves innocent children and would not force the taxpayers, even at the point of you know, IRS enforcement against you, the viewers of this audience who pay your taxes, you are being forced to participate in this. And, and when the Republicans say, no, we're going to let the taxpayers opt out of funding Planned Parenthood, they are doing the right thing. They are choosing the moral righteousness, which is listening in obedience to the Holy Spirit of God. And we discern upon them the spirit of life. The Bible says this in Galatians chapter six, let us not grow weary while we are doing good, for in due season we shall reap a harvest if we do not lose heart. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we do not cease doing good and we, we will not grow weary in doing good and fighting for liberty and fighting for life and fighting for innocence. And Father, we will reap a harvest, even if it's just to get our taxpayer dollars back or spent on more efficient things like actual women's health instead of child killing. Father, as we fight for the pro-life principles and the rights of the unborn, we ask that you would bless us and give us victory and let this law be signed into law. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, another Navy chaplain, not me this time, takes a stand for religious liberty. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage. But with the way God intended it, He always wanted us to see His view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, 
that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You want to have this important four-part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll-free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, God bless you in Jesus' name. Another former Navy chaplain, just like me, takes a stand for religious freedom. Of course, I'm talking about Wes Motter, former commander in the US Navy who writes for the Washington Times, and here is his essay. No one could have imagined, he says, just a few decades ago that a secularist invasion would change military policy from don't ask, don't tell to our current rendering of all that is gay and transgender people, and they're all fit for service in the military? Well, regardless of one's beliefs on social matters, this policy decision sets up a collision course with the privately and constitutionally protected religious beliefs of servicemen and women, including attacks on the private counsel, preaching and communications of military chaplains. To be blunt, to stifle the free expression of religion among our military troops is a morale killer. Some commanders have gone too far by ordering Christian military chaplains to not pray in Jesus' name. Well, whose name should a Christian chaplain pray in? With President Obama's policy change in place, I found myself in legal trouble, says Wes Motter when an openly gay service member who sought out my counsel as a clergyman later filed a complaint because he did not agree with my biblical counsel on matters of faith and human sexuality that was provided, by the way, in accordance with my ordaining body, the Assemblies of God Christian denomination. The Navy wanted me to support a policy in the area of care that went beyond my religious ordination, conscience, and deeply held religious beliefs. Suddenly, I was forced to make a decision between my creator and my commander. I was on the phone with someone I respected as a retired military chaplain who continued our conversation. He told me, quote, just walk away, Wes. You can retire with honor in September of 2015 and you can keep your good name. I've seen this happen before, and it never turns out well. It's not worth the energy and emotional capital it will cost both you and your family. It's just not worth it. There are no winners in this, end quote. In other words, water down your faith and don't take a stand for Jesus. Yet in my heart, Westmoder continues his essay in the Washington Times. He says, I believed that I was to stand firm for religious liberty. This felt like my David and Goliath moment. I did not pick this fight, but I was willing to fight because the cause was just. Eventually I won my case with the aid of a brilliant law firm such as First Liberty and William Hale, who partnered with many people to, who value their precious religious liberties. More importantly, the troops won when I won my legal case. It has been the norm for these past eight years for service members to be pressured by the Obama administration to renounce their religious beliefs on topics like sexuality and, or even be punished for refusing to do so, as well as other attacks on religious freedom in the military. Well, this so-called religious cleansing has national security implications and President Trump should now quickly change the atmosphere by ordering the Department of Defense to make it clear that political correctness must end. The free exercise of religious liberty is in the Constitution and military codes must be guaranteed to all service members and chaplains. And that's the news. Our thanks to the Washington Times and my new friend, Chaplain Wes Motter, for taking that stand. The Bible says this in Colossians chapter three, 
Whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. You know, people ask me, Chaps, we're watching on this network. We've already set our DVR to record your shows, but our friends don't have this network, or maybe they can't watch at this time. Did you know we are on demand on 10 different platforms? You can tell your friends to find this show, PIJN News, on their Roku box or their Amazon Fire box. Just look under the religion or news categories. Or maybe you have a smartphone or your friends or grandchildren can find us on Android TV, Google TV, Smart TV, or iTunes. Of course, we're always on the internet. Look for us on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, or better yet, subscribe to our daily email alerts at PrayInJesusName.org. It's important that you share all of these available platforms with your friends so we can mobilize all of the body of Christ to pray the news and change the world. Would you join us? Visit PrayInJesusName.org to learn more. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Luke chapter three, who who has two tunics should give to him who has none. He who has food, let him do likewise. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.